Hi, this is Joe Rabel with Invest Like a Pro. I want to spend some time and talk a little bit more in depth on why I use both MACD and ADX. Uh, a, a lot of people out there uh, and professionals even will say you really don't want to look at too many indicators. And I do agree with that. But I think it's important to understand the difference between the way these are calculated, these two indicators, the MACD and ADX, and um, get a, a, just to get a better understanding as to why um, they can complement one another. I use them in two, in a lot of, in a, most times I'll be using them in completely different ways. Um, for the ADX, I am typically using it to determine the strength of, and power of, how, of the trend. How strong is the trend right now? Um, for MACD, I am using it in specific areas to show, um, you know, more like a confirmation of a trigger mechanism with price. Um, and I, I will use it. Uh, it's a little bit more sensitive than ADX in most cases for uh, determining like uh, momentum divergence. Uh, so I'll use it in that fashion as well. Um, but first, let's just look at the actual criteria. And I'm, I am going to spend a minute um, and I'm going to type this out because I think it's important for you to have this in writing. Um, the first thing is MACD is based on closing prices. Since the calculation is using moving averages. Now, standard MACD, the MACD that I use uses exponential moving averages, but they all use the, the a moving average is based on closing prices. So when I look at this, moving averages are a first derivative. MACD is a second derivative. What that means is price is the calculation. That is the source of the calculation for, all, for everything we're doing. The price based on the high, low, and close, open, high, low, and close is really, is really a key factor because it is the source. There is no faster way to see what is going on with the stock than looking at the price action. The first derivative would be I'm using price in my calculation. So that means moving averages are based on price. So it is a first derivative. It is the first derivative indicator. MACD is based on the moving averages. So it's not actually the, the source is is to create MACD is based on moving averages, which is that which is a which is also um, which is a first derivative of price. So that's why I would say MACD is a second derivative. Um, this will become a little bit more important as I as I uh, explain this. Uh, the reason why I think this is uh, is important to understand. ADX is based on the range of the bars. Now, when I say ADX, I really should change this because it's really DI. The DI lines, which are the green and red lines down here at the bottom, are what is considered, um, uh, they're using the range of the bars to create the, uh, the DI lines and the movement in them. Uh, the close does not factor into this calc. Again, I think it's important just to know that. So DI is the lines, the DI lines are a first derivative. ADX is based on DI lines and therefore a second derivative. So what does all this mean? What this means is MACD and ADX, as important as they are, they are not, they're not going to be early. In most cases, there's going to be some form of a lag because 
you're not only using the, the price as the source, you're taking a calculation of price and then taking another calculation of that. So again, being the second derivative, you're typically, I mean, you're never going to get a signal as quick as, as looking at price action. This is my whole reasoning for why I believe you really need to watch price and know price and look at what you're looking uh, look look understand what you're looking for at, in uh, in the price action because nothing's going to be quicker if you can recognize that you have a huge edge you want all your triggers most of your triggers to be based on price there's nothing wrong with having the trigger confirmed by uh, say a MACD signal but in most cases you really want to understand that it is a second derivative so uh, your, your core signal should be coming from price. Moving averages being a first derivative can be very important. A lot of times there's not a significant amount of lag to them. And I think there's some important implications that take place when it comes to, to different patterns uh, with the moving averages. Um, the DI lines are also a first derivative. They are very, very important. In my book, uh, Invest Like a Pro, I don't go into detail on how I would look at DI lines by themselves and how they can be, they can actually be very helpful in the timing as well. I think if you first understand MACD as a timing tool and you understand ADX, the blue line here, as, a, as an indicator of how strong the trend is, then I think you're, you're heading in the right direction. Because you know you want to use the ADX to, to sort of determine which stocks to play, and then you want to use MACD to help you with the timing of the entry. So those are the two ways that I think you can really use this. Um, I wanted to write this out so again you have this kind of copied down uh, and and as a reference because uh, I do believe it's pretty important to understand the difference and understand the difference between the source action of price a first derivative indicator and a second der derivative indicator. So every time you look at an indicator, understand how it's calculated, figure out how, how in depth that calculation is and whether it's a first derivative or a second. Now, once I'm looking at these indicators, I, I wanna point out just a few quick things. I mean, the main point is I wanted to show that um, in the calculation, um, ADX is based on range meaning you're looking at one bar here and you look at the high of this bar and then to create the di difference i'm looking at the range so i'm looking at the difference between that high and this high those two red lines that's di that's positive di and then on the next bar i'm looking at positive di again so that's the difference between the second red bar and the third red bar that's another calculation in the DI. And then if I go again, I've got DI here. These are all plus DIs. So every time you make new highs in the move based on the range, not on the close, but based on the range, the positive DI is going to start climbing. So this is all positive DI all the way up until this point. And the reason why I say to this point is because from that point on, you don't take out that high. You keep making kind of a drop. And look at where the D, look at where the green DI makes a peak. You see where it stops to drop off from there? That's because that was all positive DI. And now you're creating uh, negative DI from this point. Let me just get rid of these real quick. I just want to make sure you understand this. So once you start making lower lows, now I'm looking at this bottom and this bottom, and that's negative DI. Now look at this big drop here. Oops, big drop to here. That's massive negative DI in one single bar. Now here's the interesting thing. In this case, you actually made um, a lower low and a higher high. So which wins? Is it a positive DI day or is it a negative DI day? The answer is the way the way the way they create the calculation is whichever is bigger for the day is uh, is considered the calculation, and you ignore the other. So um, in this in this case, I think it's uh, you know I, I believe I don't have the calculation up here, but it looks like red DI made a peak on that day. So that would have been the, that would have been calculated on the negative side. But then right after that, from this point on, we started creating more positive DI to the upside. 
So I just I wanted to spend a minute or two just to make sure you understand how the, the DI is calculated because MACD is just using closing prices. It really doesn't care about the range of the day. This big movement here doesn't matter. It's using the close. It's using the close here. It's using the close here. And you could almost look at this and say to create um, MACD, you only need the closing price. You don't need the uh, you do really don't need the high and the low range to create the calculation. Uh, let's just take this back. I'm going to add one more element to this that I think is important. So as I mentioned before, I use ADX for the strength. So this gray line is telling you whether ADX is above 25 or not. That's the blue line. If ADX can make a peak with price that is greater than 25, and I prefer to see you know, 30, maybe even 35, sometimes 40. If, if you get that in the peak, then during the pullback, it can pull back below 25. But every time you make a new peak and you cre create a new run, I want to see 20. I want to see ADX getting above 25. So every time this has made new highs after a correction, it's come down, it's made a new peak, right? You made another correction and dropped down. Every time this, this has made a move up, ADX has crossed back above 25. Now we are above Right now, we're making a new high in price, and ADX has not confirmed yet. This is going to need to climb above 25 to confirm that we are still in a strong trend and that I, I'm be willing to buy the next pullback. If that's not the case, then I don't really want to buy the next pullback. Let's say this turns from here and breaks the 18-week 18, 18, uh, moving average. I, I no longer am looking at this as a bullish trend right now. I think you're going to have more corrective action. Uh, for MACD, I mean, if you look at this, look at the periods where ADX gets really, really low. Um, here's a spot where it's really at a very low point. Um, here's another spot where you're at a very, those are the two lowest spots on the chart, right? And look at what happens. The MACD actually does a zero line reversal in both those instances. So a lot of times when MACD, when the ADX is at a point, maybe at a critical point where it's getting ready to turn because it's gotten so low, the MACD is actually giving you a very interesting signal as to say, you know what, I'm, I probably want to be a buyer. And in both those cases, I'd have probably been drawing in a trend line. Whoops. I would have probably been drawing in a trend line here. And in this case, because the ADX was so low, I might have drawn a really tight trend line uh, something along those lines. So in both cases, you're getting zero line confirmation on both of those triggers. So um, I just wanted to spend a minute. This probably went a little longer than I expected, but I thought it was important to explain the difference between MACD, ADX, and really understanding the calculation between the two. Hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or this doesn't is not quite as clear, please post some comments below uh, and uh, subscribe to uh, to the video so you can get for uh, notifications on anything new.